Eileen Parker was married to Prince Philip's closest friend and aide, Mike Parker, for 15 years. As a young couple, they socialized at parties, the theatre and at home with the newly married Prince Philip and Princess Elizabeth. As the second series of Netflix as The Crown focuses on this period of the royal marriage, Eileen's memoir, first issued in 1982, is being republished. Today, aged 95, Eileen is living in a care home, supported by her family and friends. As our hired limousine glided up the wide avenue of the mall, my husband, Mike, and I peered out at the swarming crowd cheering our progress. Above the revelry, framed by the mall's leafless trees, the austere grandeur of Buckingham Palace stood stark in a blaze of floodlights. All of London was being drawn in the same direction. It was Monday, November 17, 1947 and in just three days the heir to the throne, Princess Elizabeth, was getting married to Mike's closest wartime friend, Philip, Prince of Greece. Inside the palace, under the sparkling chandeliers, sipping champagne, the family of cousins representing the crowned heads of Europe was gathering for its biggest celebration since the downfall of Nazi Germany. And, incredible as it seemed, we would soon be joining them. The busy life of a wren on a succession of Scottish naval bases had broadened my social outlook and made me better at handling my shyness, but how was one to supposed to cope with a glittering reunion of royalty? Was my hair all right? My ball gown? It was an off-the-shoulder design in white satin from a Glasgow department store. I wore it with a single strand of pearls and my mother's fur coat. The effect I had been aiming for was the only one possible at a time of strict post-war rationing, neat and simple. But perhaps I was looking too neat too simple? The car drew up under a porch a footman in state livery came forward. Mike sensed my nervousness and, with a soft word, squeezed my arm reassuringly. I adjusted the corsage of flowers at my shoulder and stepped for the first time onto the red carpet of Buckingham Palace. In the queue waiting to be presented, I was admiring the splendor of the gilt decoration and handsome furniture when I heard our names being called and with a deep breath walked towards the royal family. Mike had coached me on the correct way to curtsy and how to hold out my hand, limply, with the palm inwards, for the single squeeze of the royal handshake, whatever happens, don't squeeze back. George VI was shorter than I had anticipated, not much taller than my own 5 feet 3 in. Mike had warned me not to prompt him if he ran into difficulties with his stammer, nor to speak unless spoken to first. As it turned out, the king remained silent, but when we passed the queen, I heard her remark to Mike, what a lovely wee wife you have got. It was part of her charm to put people at ease. The presentations over, the band launched into a medley from the musical Oklahoma and Princess Elizabeth's private secretary, John Jock Colville, turned to Mike, the Navy's got to start off the dancing. He meant us. I felt my arms and legs fail me as Mike steered me onto the empty dance floor. Away we went, instinctively in step with the music, just as we had danced so many times before. Luckily, it was a foxtrot, one of my favorites. Later, as the hokey cokey gave way to the conga, Princess Elizabeth led the line of dancers and I heard the Queen whisper, 
I mustn't miss this, Bertie, holding her robe with one hand and clutching the king's coat tails with the other as they joined in. It seemed incredible that I should be dancing alongside them, but this was to be the first of my many encounters with the royal family as Mike settled into a new job as Prince Philip's first equerry. Often, we join them on their weekly visits to a private cinema in Piccadilly at the invitation of film producer Sir Alexander Corda. Alongside the newlyweds Prince Philip and Princess Elizabeth, the party would normally include the King and Queen and Princess Margaret and they took huge delight in seeing themselves in the newsreels. Look at the face she's pulling. How could you wear the hat? What are you hiding from the camera there? Princess Margaret was always very sharp-witted when it came to joining in the commentaries. Still a teenager, she loved breaking the rules by propping her feet on the seat in front until reprimanded by King George, a performance she repeated week after week. We would then go back to Buckingham Palace where we'd have fish and chips and listen to the King's favourite BBC radio comedy, It's That Man Again, starring Tommy Hendley. This close proximity to royalty was as alien to Mike as it was to me. Born in Melbourne in 1920, the son of a retired naval officer, he joined the Royal Australian Navy at the age of 14 and transferred to the Royal Navy when he was 18. He and Prince Philip passed their lieutenant exams at about the same time and soon after the outbreak of the war they found themselves serving in the same flotilla, at the Royal Naval Base at Roseth on Scotland's east coast. I grew up on the opposite coast, in the small town of Troon, and we were relatively well off, my father being a successful manufacturer of steel ropes for the Glasgow shipbuilding industry. When I left school in 1940, I almost immediately joined the Women's Royal Navy Service, the Wrens, and it was at one of their dances that I first met Mike and began travelling over to Roseth to see him at weekends. One Saturday, he informed me casually that we were giving a friend of his a lift into Edinburgh to do some shopping I've told you about him before. He's called Philip some sort of Greek prince. I feel sure you'll like him. I well remember thinking what a handsome man Philip of Greece was, tall, with piercing blue eyes and a shock of blonde hair swept back from his forehead. I was not surprised to hear that every wren on the base had her sights on him. Mike and I married in 1943, but Prince Philip's personal life remained something of a mystery. It was inconceivable that such an eligible young officer didn't have a sweetheart somewhere but, although we didn't know it then, he had already met Princess Elizabeth as a cadet at Dartmouth Naval College and was visiting her when he was on leave. By the time that he and Mike were posted to the Pacific Fleet and sent to join the naval campaign against the Japanese in May 1944, the press had long been on the scent of the story, much to Prince Philip's irritation. Both he and Mike had grown beards while at sea and, during shore leave in Australia, they confounded the reporters by a neat swap of identities, with Prince Philip pointing Mike out before merging into the crowd with the words, that's the man you want. Later, the two of them saw action off the coasts of Burma and Sumatra and then, 